In the Christian world, there's a significant debate about music. Some argue that music is neither moral nor immoral, while others believe that it does have moral implications. They also debate whether lyrics or the music itself matter more. Let's explore what some contemporary Christian musicians and experts say. Sandy Patty, a prominent artist, believes that music is a powerful force that can break down barriers. However, she also acknowledges that some artists use this power to convey negative messages, which can shape listeners' values. She suggests that Christian musicians should use music's power for positive, value-shaping lyrics. On the other hand, David Meese, another Christian artist, emphasizes that lyrics are the primary criteria for judging music's moral stance. He believes that as long as the lyrics are about Jesus, the style of music doesn't matter. Professor Marshall McLuhan, a renowned media scholar, offers a different perspective. He argues that music's melody, harmony, and rhythm alone can influence a person's emotions and virtue. He suggests that the emotional impact of music should be a basis for judging its moral value. Brain specialist Dr. Richard Pellegrino points out that music has the remarkable ability to rapidly change emotional states. He claims that music can affect people's emotions more quickly and powerfully than therapy sessions. This underscores the potency of music in shaping emotions. In a simple experiment, the audience is asked to close their eyes and listen to different pieces of music. They are then asked to describe how the music made them feel. The results show that music has an immediate and consistent emotional impact on listeners, regardless of lyrics. Dr. Norman N. Weinberger, a neurobiology and behavior professor, confirms that music can rapidly set moods in a way that other methods cannot. The text concludes by emphasizing that music has the power to influence thoughts and feelings, making it a moral component of our lives. It warns against disregarding the moral impact of music and suggests that we should be conscious of the values it shapes. The history of music has seen significant changes over the centuries, influencing how we perceive and use music today. Let's take a quick journey through time, from the Renaissance to modern times, to understand these changes. During the Renaissance, 1450 to 1600, music was characterized by its smooth, gentle rhythms and balanced melodies. It served both sacred and secular purposes. Even secular music of that time had similarities to sacred music. As America developed, it became a melting pot for various musical genres. African slaves brought tribal drum rhythms and rituals with them, contributing to the diversity of American music. This blend eventually gave rise to new genres like blues and rhythm and blues. The term rock and roll emerged from the observation that young people listening to this music were engaging in inappropriate intimate behavior in the back seats of cars, causing them to rock and roll. Notably, syncopation in music, while not inherently negative, should be used in moderation, like seasoning in a meal. Excessive syncopation can disrupt the music's flow. In summary, music has evolved over time, influenced by cultural interactions and developments in different regions. Syncopation, when used sparingly, can enhance music, but excessive syncopation should be avoided. Note, these simplified versions maintain the core ideas while using simpler language and shorter sentences for better understanding. On one, and maybe even three, it's about Jesus. Okay, Jesus loves me. This is what I understand because the Bible tells me so. Like a little child would sing it, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's the one and the three. It feels natural. Now watch what happens if we shift from one to two. Look at this. Jesus loves me, this I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so. Oh, it's different, two instead of one. Did you notice the difference? Now let's try three. Jesus loves me, this I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so. Three this time. Let's challenge ourselves with four. Jesus loves me, this I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so. We just changed the emphasis from one and three to two, three or four. When we mess around with that, we call it syncopation. Now, in one of my songs on my holiday album, I included Joy to the World. There's a part with syncopation, but it's subtle. 
The problem arises when we use syncopation to add interest and energy to music. Syncopation short-circuits the prefrontal cortex, putting us in an alpha brain pattern. Incoming information enters without being analyzed. Polyrhythmic elements can also short-circuit the frontal brain area. Movies and TV shows use this technique too, creating a similar effect where we become passive and not critically analyzing incoming information. It's concerning, especially if you're exposed to harmful content. Polyrhythmic elements have been found to short-circuit the frontal brain area. This happens during rituals in places like the Congo and Europa. They involve intricate layers of multiple rhythmic drumming, considered a source of heavenly or occult power. Interestingly, polyrhythmic elements are present in various cultures worldwide, from Japan to Europe to Native American traditions. So it's not just an African issue, it's global. Now let's listen to actual voodoo music samples. These are genuinely from voodoo rituals. While we may not understand the lyrics, the music holds occult power. By repackaging this power with different lyrics, the music of the 1950s took off. In the 1840s, some Africans turned to Christianity, forming their churches. Some abandoned drums altogether, while others incorporated them into their worship introducing syncopated rhythms. This gave rise to what we now know as the Holy Flesh Movement, where congregants sought possession by the Holy Spirit during services, paralleling the pagan practices. Now, Aleister Crowley enters the scene, introducing Thelma, a religious philosophy. He claimed to receive guidance from an entity named Iwas, resulting in the Satanic Church's roots. Their philosophy, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, is the opposite of surrendering to God's will. Crowley wanted to use music to usher in the New Age, the age of Aquarius in the 60s and 70s. He aimed to indoctrinate youth with the idea of doing whatever they wanted. This laid the foundation for the synthesis of African rhythms and the do what thou wilt philosophy, leading to the birth of rock and roll. Instruments like the rhythm guitar joined the mix, adding to the syncopation and polyrhythmic elements in music. This shift was subtle but significant, taking us into a different spiritual realm without us realizing it. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, music deviated from God's intention, with drugs, rebellion, and disregard for authority becoming rampant. Music began openly glorifying the devil. The devil's philosophy, do what thou wilt, became pervasive during this era. Youth embraced this revolutionary rebellion, rejecting authority and tradition. Some satanic elements were concealed in certain groups, like the Beatles. They may seem innocent, but they don't pass the test when examined closely. Music had a powerful impact on changing people's behavior and beliefs, as recognized even in the 6th century BC. Anton LaVey continued this tradition, founding the Church of Satan and promoting the idea of do what thou wilt. His philosophy opposes God's will, encouraging people to follow their desires without restraint. Today, we see music's effects on our brain, pushing us away from logic and towards doing whatever we want. High-tech music scenes like the DJ culture induce a tribal atmosphere, reminiscent of the voodoo rhythms we heard earlier. This music often leads to a disregard for logic and critical thinking, aligning with the devil's philosophy. In conclusion, music's power to influence and manipulate has been harnessed by various groups throughout history. We must be vigilant in our choices, if you enjoyed ensuring this video, that the music we listen to aligns with our with values and beliefs so we can keep rather them. than leading us For astray. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.